The Wars of the Jews by Josephus. Book 2, chapters 21 and 22. Chapter 21. Concerning John of Geshala. Josephus uses stratagems against the plots John laid against him, and recovers certain cities which had revolted from him. 1. Now as Josephus was thus engaged in the administration of the affairs of Galilee, there arose a treacherous person, a man of Geshala, the son of Levi, whose name was John. His character was that of a very cunning and very knavish person, beyond the ordinary rate of the other men of eminence there, and for wicked practices he had not his fellow anywhere. Poor he was at first, and for a long time his wants were a hindrance to him in his wicked designs. He was a ready liar, and yet very sharp in gaining credit to his fictions. He thought it a point of virtue to delude people, and would delude even such as were the dearest dearest to him. He was a hypocritical pretender to humanity, but where he had hopes of gain, he spared not the shedding of blood. His desires were ever carried to great things, and he encouraged his hopes from those mean wicked tricks which he was the author of. He had a peculiar knack at thieving. But in some time he got certain companions in his impudent practices. At first they were but few, but as he proceeded on in his evil course, they became still more and more numerous. He took care that none of his partners should be easily caught in their rogueries, but chose such out of the rest as had the strongest constitutions of body, and the greatest courage of soul, together with great skill in martial affairs. As he got together a band of four hundred men, who came principally out of the country of Tyre, and were vagabonds that had run away from its villages, and by the means of these he laid waste number, who were in great expectation of a war, then suddenly to rise among them. 2. However, John's want of money had hitherto restrained him in his ambition after command, and in his attempts to advance himself. But when he saw that Josephus was highly pleased with the activity of his temper, he persuaded him, in the first place, to entrust him with the repairing of the walls of his native city, Geshala, in which work he got a great deal of money from the rich citizens. He after that contrived a very shrewd trick, and pretending that the Jews who dwelt in Syria were obliged to make use of oil that was made by others than those of their own nation, he desired leave of Josephus to send oil to their borders. So he bought four amphorae, with such Tyrian money as was for the value of four Attic drachmae, and sold every half amphora at the same price. And as Galilee was very fruitful in oil, and was peculiarly so at the oil, and was peculiarly so at the time, by sending away great quantities, and having the sole privilege so to do, he gathered an immense sum of money together, which money he immediately used to the disadvantage of him who gave him that privilege, and, as he supposed, that if he could once overthrow Josephus, he should himself obtain the government of Galilee. So he gave orders to the robbers that were under his command to be more zealous in their thievish expeditions, that by the rise of many that desired innovations in the country, he might either catch their general in his snares, as he came to the country's assistance, and then kill him, or if he should overlook the robbers, he might accuse him for his negligence to the people of the country. He also spread abroad a report far and near, that Josephus was delivering up the administration of affairs to the Romans, and many such plots did he lay in order to ruin him. 3. Now at the Sberita, who kept guard in the great plain, laid snares for Ptolemy, who was Agrippa's and Bernice's steward, and took from him all that he had with him, among which things there were a great many costly garments, and no small number of silver cuffs, and six hundred pieces of gold. Yet were they not able to conceal what they had stolen, but brought it all to Josephus, to Terrache. Hereupon he blamed them for the violence they had offered to the king and queen, and deposited what they had brought to him with Aeneas, the most potent man of Terrache, with an intention of sending the things back to the owners at a proper time, which act of Josephus brought him into the greatest danger, for those that had stolen the things had an indignation at him, both because they gained no share of it for themselves, and because they perceived beforehand what was Josephus's intention, and that he would freely deliver up what had cost them so much pains to the king and queen a hundred 
and that he would freely deliver up what had cost them so much pains to the king and queen. These ran away by night to their several villages, and declared to all men that Josephus was going to betray them. They also raised great disorders in all the neighboring cities, insomuch that in the morning a hundred thousand armed men came running together, which multitude was crowded together in the Hippodrome at Terrake, and made a very peevish clamor against him, while some cried out that they should depose the traitor, and others that they should burn him. Now John irritated a great many, as did also one Jesus, the son of Saphius, who was then governor of Tiberias. Then it was that Josephus's friends, and the guards of his body, were so affrighted at this violent assault of the multitude, that they all fled away but four. And as he was asleep, they awaked him, and the people were going to set fire to the house. And although these four that himself deserted, nor at the great multitude that came against him, but leaped out to them with his clothes rent, and ashes sprinkled on his head, with his hands behind him, and his sword hanging at his neck. At this sight his friends, especially those of Terrake, commiserated his condition, but those that came out of the country, and those in their neighborhood, to whom his government seemed burdensome, reproached him, and bid him produce the money which belonged to them all immediately, and to confess the agreement he had made to betray them for they imagined, from the habit in which he appeared, that he would deny nothing of what they suspected concerning him, and that it was in order to obtain pardon that he had put himself entirely into so pitiable a posture. But this humble appearance was only designed as preparatory to a stratagem of his, who thereby contrived to set those who were so angry at him at variance one with another about the things they were angry at. However, he they were angry at, However, he promised he would confess all. Hereupon he was permitted to speak when he said, I did neither intend to send this money back to Agrippa, nor to gain it myself, for I did never esteem one that was your enemy to be my friend, nor did I look upon what would tend to your disadvantage to be my advantage. But, O oh, you people of Terracate, I saw that your city stood in more need than others of fortifications for your security, and that it wanted money in order for the building it a wall. I was also afraid lest the people of Tiberias and other cities should lay a plot to seize upon these spoils, and therefore it was that I intended to retain this money privately, that I might encompass you with a wall. But if this does not please you, I will produce what was brought me, and leave it to you to plunder it. But if I have conducted myself so well as to please you, you may, if you please, punish your benefactor." for, on his friend, but those of Tiberias, with the rest of the company, gave him hard names, and threatened what they would do to him. So both sides left off quarreling with Josephus, and fell on quarreling with one another. So he grew bold upon the dependence he had on his friends, which were the people of Terrake, and about forty thousand in number, and spoke more freely to the whole multitude, and reproached them greatly for their rashness and told them that with this money he would build walls about Terrake, and would put the other cities in a state of security also, for that they should not want money, if they would but agree for whose benefit it was to be procured, and would not suffer themselves to be irritated against him who procured it for them. 5. Hereupon the rest of the multitude that had been deluded retired but yet so that they went away angry, and two thousand of them made an assault upon him in their armor. And as he was already gone to his own house, and as he was already gone to his own house, they stood without and threatened him. On which occasion Josephus again used a second stratagem to escape them. For he got upon the top of his house, and with his right hand desired them to be silent, and said to them, I cannot tell what you would have, nor can hear what you say, for the confused noise you make. But he said that he would comply with all their demands, in case they would but send some of their number into him, that might talk with him about it. And when the principal of them, with their leaders, heard this, they came into the house. He then drew them to the most retired part of the house, and shut the door of that hall where he put them, and then had them whipped till every one of their inward parts appeared naked. In the meantime the multitude stood round the house, and supposed that he had a long discourse with those that were gone in about what they had claimed of him. He had then the doors set open immediately, and sent the men out all bloody, he pretended all bloody, 
which so terribly affrighted those that had before threatened him, that they threw away their arms and ran away. 6. But as for John, his envy grew greater upon this escape of Josephus, and he framed a new plot against him. He pretended to be sick, and by a letter desired that Josephus should give him leave to use the hot baths that were at Tiberias for the recovery of his health. Hereupon Josephus, who hitherto suspected nothing of John's plots against him, wrote to the governors of the city that they would provide a lodging and necessaries for John, which favors, when he had made use of, in two days' time he did what he came about. Some he corrupted with delusive frauds, and others with money, and so persuaded them to revolt from Josephus. This Silas, who was appointed guardian of the city by Josephus, wrote to him immediately, and informed him of the plot against him. Japissel, when Josephus had received, he marched with great diligence all night, and came early in the morning to Tiberias, at which time the rest of the multitude met him. But John, who suspected that his coming was not for his advantage, sent, however, one of his friends, and pretended that he was sick, and that being confined to his bed, he could not come to pay him his respects. But as soon as Josephus had got the people of Tiberias together in the stadium, and tried to discourse with them about the letters that he had received, John privately sent some armed men, and gave them orders to slay him. But when the people saw that the armed men were about to draw their swords, they cried out. At which cry Josephus turned himself about, and when he saw that the swords were just at his throat, he marched away in great haste to the seashore, and left off that speech, which he was going to make to the people, upon an elevation of six cubits high, and leaped into it with two of his guards, and fled away into the midst of the lake. 7. But now the soldiers he had with him took up their arms immediately, and marched against the plotters. But Josephus was afraid lest a civil war should be raised by the envy of a few men, and bring the city to ruin. So he sent some of his party to tell them, that they should do no more than provide for their own safety, that they should not kill anybody, nor accuse any for the occasion they had afforded of disorder. Accordingly these men obeyed his orders and were quiet, but the people of the neighboring country, when they were informed of this plot, and of the plotter, they got together in great multitudes to oppose John. But he prevented their attempt, and fled away to Geshala, his native city, while the Galileans came running out of their several cities to Josephus. And as they were now become many ten thousands of armed men, they cried out that they were come against those time burn him, and that city which had received him. Hereupon Josephus told them that he took their good will to him kindly, but still he restrained their fury, and intended to subdue his enemies by prudent conduct, rather than by slaying them so he accepted those of every city which had joined in this revolt with John, by name, who had readily been shown him by these that came from every city, and caused public proclamation to be made, that he would seize upon the effects of those that did not forsake John within five days' time, and would burn both their houses and their families with fire. Whereupon three thousand of John's party left him immediately, who came to Josephus, and threw their arms down at his feet. John then betook himself, together with his two thousand Syrian runagates, from open attempts to more secret ways of treachery. Accordingly, he privately sent messengers to Jerusalem to accuse Josephus as having to great power, Josephus, um, to accuse Josephus as having to great power, and to let them know that he would soon come as a tyrant to their metropolis unless they prevented him. This accusation the people were aware of beforehand but had no regard to it. However, some of the grandees, out of envy, and some of the rulers also, sent money to John privately, that he might be able to get together mercenary soldiers, in order to fight Josephus. They also made a decree of themselves, and this for recalling him from his government, yet did they not think that decree sufficient. So they sent withal two thousand five hundred armed men, and four persons of the highest rank amongst them, Joazar the son of Nomachus, and Ananias the son of Sadduk, as also Simon and Judas the sons of Jonathan, all very able men in speaking, that these persons might withdraw the good will of the people from Josephus. These had it in charge, that if he would voluntarily come away, 
they should permit him to come and give an account of his conduct. But if he obstinately insisted upon continuing in his government, they should treat him as an enemy. Now Josephus's friends had sent him word that an army was coming against him, but they gave him no notice beforehand what the reason of their coming was, that being only known among some secret councils of his enemies. And by this means it was that four cities revolted from him immediately, Sephorus and Gamala and Geshala and Tiberias. Yet did he recover these cities without war. And when he had routed those four commanders by stratagems, and had taken the most potent of their warriors, he sent them to Jerusalem, and the people of Galilee had great indignation at them, and were in a zealous disposition to slay not only these forces, but those that sent them also, had not these forces prevented it by running away. Running away. 8. Now John was detained afterward within the walls of Geshala by the fear he was in of Josephus. But within a few days Tiberius revolted again, the people within it inviting King Agrippa to return to the exercise of his authority there. And when he did not come at the time appointed, and when a few Roman horsemen appeared that day, they expelled Josephus out of the city. Now this revolt of theirs was presently known at Terrache. And as Josephus had sent out all the soldiers that were with him to gather corn, he knew not how either to march out alone against the revolters, or to stay where he was, because he was afraid the king's soldiers might prevent him if he tarried, and might get into the city. For he did not intend to do anything on the next day, because it was the Sabbath day, and would hinder his proceeding. So he contrived to circumvent the revolters by a stratagem, and in the first place he ordered to form those of Tiberias, for whom it was intended, what stratagem he was about. He then got together all the ships that were upon the lake, which were found to be two hundred and thirty, and in each of them he put no more than four mariners. So he sailed to Tiberias with haste, and kept at such a distance from the city, that it was not easy for the people to see the vessels, and ordered that the empty vessels should float up and down there, while himself, who had but seven of his guards with him, and those unarmed also, went so near as to be seen. But when his adversaries, who were still reproaching him, saw him from the walls, they were so astonished that they supposed all the ships were full of armed men, and threw down their arms, and by signals of intercession they besought him to spare the city. 9. Upon this Josephus threatened them terribly, and reproached them, that when they were the first that took up arms against the Romans, they should send reproached them, that when they were the first that took up arms against the Romans, they should spend their force beforehand in civil dissensions, and do what their enemies desired above all things, and that besides they should endeavor so hastily to seize upon him, who took care of their safety, and had not been ashamed to shut the gates of their city against him that built their walls, that, however, he would admit of any intercessors from them that might make some excuse for them, and with whom he would make such agreements as might be for the city's security. Hereupon ten of the most potent men of Tiberias came down to him presently, and when he had taken them into one of his vessels, he ordered them to be carried a great way off from the city. He then commanded that fifty others of their senate, such as were men of the greatest eminence, should come to him, that they might also give him some security on their behalf. After which, under one new pretense or another, he called forth others, one after another, section third, the masters of those vessels, which he had thus filled, to sail away immediately for Terrache, and to confine those men in the prison there, till at length he took all their senate, consisting of six hundred persons, and about two thousand of the populace, and carried them away to Terrache. Footnote. I cannot but think this stratagem of Josephus, which is related both here and in his life, section 32-33, to be one of the finest that ever was invented and executed by any warrior whatsoever. And footnote. 10. And when the rest of the people cried out that it was one Clitus that was the chief author of this revolt, they desired him to spend his anger upon him only. But Josephus, whose intention it was to slay nobody, commanded one Levius, belonging to his guards, to go out of the vessel in order to cut off both Clitus's hands. Yet was Livius afraid to go out by himself alone, both Clitus's hands. 
yet was livius afraid to go out by himself alone to such a large body of enemies and refused to go now clitus saw that josephus was in a great passion in the ship and ready to leap out of it in order to execute the punishment himself he begged therefore from the shore that he would leave him one of his hands which josephus agreed to upon condition that he would himself cut off the other hand accordingly he drew his sword and with his right hand cut off his left so great was the fear he was in of josephus himself and thus he took the people of tiberius prisoners and recovered the city again with empty ships and seven of his guard moreover a few days afterward he retook geshala which had revolted with the people of sephorus and gave his soldiers leave to plunder it yet did he get all the plunder together and restored it to the inhabitants and the like he did to the inhabitants plundering cities he had a mind by letting them be plundered to give them some good instruction while at the same time he regained their good will by restoring them their money again chapter twenty two the jews make all ready for the war and simon the son of gioras falls to plundering one and thus were the disturbances of galilee quieted when upon their ceasing to prosecute their civil dissensions they betook themselves to make preparations for the war with the romans now in jerusalem the high priest artanus and do as many of the men of power as were not in the interest of the romans both repaired the walls and made a great many warlike instruments insomuch that in all parts of the city darts and all sorts of armor were upon the anvil although the multitude of the young men were engaged in exercises without any regularity and all places were full of tumultuous doings yet the moderate sort were exceedingly and a great many there were also out of the prospect they had of the calamities that were coming upon them made great lamentations there were also such omens observed as were understood to be forerunners of evils by such as loved peace but were by those that kindled the war interpreted so as to suit their own inclinations and the very state of the city even before the romans came against it was that of a place doomed to destruction however ananus's concern was this to lay aside for a while the preparations for the war and to persuade the seditious to consult their own interest and to restrain the madness of those that had the name of zealots but their violence was too hard for him and what end he came to we shall relate hereafter two but as for the acrobane toparchy simon the son of gioras got a great number of those that were fond of innovations together and betook him country nor did he only harass the rich men's houses but tormented their bodies and appeared openly and beforehand to affect tyranny in his government and when an army was sent against him by artanus and the other rulers he and his band retired to the robbers that were at masada and stayed there and plundered the country of idumea with them till both ananus and his other adversaries were slain and until the rulers of that country were so afflicted with the multitude of those that were slain and with the continual ravage of what they had that they raised an army and put garrisons into the villages to secure them from those insults and in this state were the affairs of judea at that time end of book 2 chapters 21 and 22 end of book 2